Thunderstruck needing to get there. Alligator blood tiring. I'm Thunderstruck over the top, rumbling hard and got up. I'm Thunderstruck. I reckon it's just beaten Alligator blood in a beauty. Welcome to Bet Doctor Behind the Curtain. Look at how pro punters operate. I'm your host, Scoot. I'm joined in the Gold Coast studio with Johnny Walter. How are you, mate? What's going on, mate? Are you putting another floor on the house out the front there? You got the construction team going? Tell you what, two doors down, there's a bit of banging and clanging. Everyone in the Gold Coast seems to have a little, like, port. what is it, like a veranda or a carport that they sort of add onto their house and they turn their garage into extra rooms. And out, up our area where all the mozzies are and that, they put off having the indoor-outdoor room as well. You've got to have all these things in Queensland, you know. You've got to be prepared for everything. Hopefully uh, it survives the uh, the floods and La Nina, as uh, all the doomsayers reckon we're going to in our canoes again over spring and summer up here, so that remains to be seen. But uh, big weather watch for uh, Caulfield for sure, and the same. I think it was heavy rain last night in Sydney, so it'll be interesting to see uh, what happens next. But uh, mm. Walt was a bit surprised he didn't get an invite to meet the Queen, but your old mate Chris Waller? Filtering down, I see Gay's in there now too. Which, what, uh, so she got to start? Yeah, she's there, which is probably deserved. Like she's the closest thing to a queen we've got, I guess. <laughs> but um, well, well, apart from the queen, but uh, yeah, a bit strange. Bit Weird, strange. Isn't it? So bit like strange. top ten and then twenty, and you go to fifty. Is there a hundred? You'd be looking for a gap not to go, surely. <laughs> like, why would you want to? Yeah, like a big, big occasion. But gee, it's creep. It's like, will Steph be the plus one? Well, I well, was PVL. actually thinking. TV that was more likely that <laughs> they might show up in the buggy, like, you know, like at Royal Ascot and maybe very elegant might tow it along or something. <laughs> oh, nasty. Yeah, oh, far out. It's all too much for me. DK, how are you back in uh, Sin City in Melbourne, mate? Uh, how are you going? And then uh, would, would you go over if you were invited? Well, hey, Scoot, I'll, I'm, um, I'm in, a, in a lot better nick physically than I was last week on that thing in my eye that, Geez, I was. A, I wouldn't want. I don't want to put too many of them. Shows a sign I'm getting old. And but I did. Uh, speaking of the coin, I did stay up last night and watch the uh, the procession from Buckingham taking the casket from Buckingham Palace to Westminster Hall up the road. Um, so that meant I tipped in another. You know, normal that that went from. I oh know that finished at twelve thirty one o'clock. So I tipped in another half a bottle of red, staying up late to watch that. So and then I was up at Sparrows for to do this. But um, so I love all that stuff. The pageantry and the pomp and battery is fantastic. All those. Had all the guards, all the military guards, the bands going. It was solemn, but it was, it was just magnificent. But um, now, if you're trained a horse for it, you've got a gig. I mean, that that apparently where they, Westminster, where they're having the funeral, fits eight thousand. So um, you know what David Hayes is, he got a gig because he trained for us. Hey, Gay uh, Waller. So if you if you trained for you got a gig, I I go to the town only because it's history and um, London's going to be absolutely every world leader's there. A whole joint's just going to be going off really for that. Couple, I know it's a funeral, but I mean, if you were going to go to London, that'd be the that'd be the time to go. The joint's going to be just heaving. Nico, what about you? Big fan of the monarchy? Uh, not really. It's sad. Queen Tip- Elizabeth, you have no, you mate, you're a youngster. Not really. Yeah, I think it goes goes a bit over my generation's head. I don't think anyone really sort of. Um, not that we didn't care, but I don't think we have the care that a lot of you guys have. Uh, not that we didn't that care, way, we but- just don't care. Hell yeah, it's great. <laughs> You, you're too busy uh, doing the replays for Sandown and then putting your head into Caulfield, wouldn't you, Nick? Yeah, it was a busy busy day yesterday. Wednesday's always a busy day, uh, getting ready for sort of the weekend and churning through the Sandown form and all those kind of things. So um, it wasn't too bad a day out there at Sandown. managed to get out alive, which was uh, something. But, um, yeah, I suppose the rain down here in Melbourne is the, uh, the biggest downfall at the moment. We could be on a, a heavy track on Sunday or a bloody a good track. Who knows? Um, Last week we kind of thought it might go the other way and be good, and then it went the complete opposite, and we were nearly on a heavy eight. So, uh, yeah, tough doing the early form at the moment. Mm, it's same, same in Sydney too. I think isn't it going to be wilder? Just listening to listen on the radio on the way in, they had Snowden on, and he said, "Oh, I'm I'm consigned to being a heavy eight. And then he got John O'Shea on. John O'Shea said, "No, no, nah, I've very doubt very much it's going to be heavy eight. Are we going to be soft six, soft seven worse? So it's still uh, weather gods are everything's in the lap of the gods at the moment." Five mils there a couple of weeks ago. I think about forty fell, and then this is twenty to forty today. And now it's the little five to tens popped up tomorrow. Who mm. knows? Tell you what, someone that you can bank on at the moment is Nick Ryan. How's this for uh, a little start? He almost landed a plunge yesterday. I think it was Red Fan of fifteen into three fifty. Ran second. You're on tight prices, I hope. Chris Chris Waller, 
Um, oh, I think it was still eight in the three fifty, so it's still yeah, that's more. That's right. So quite quite the correct price. <laughs> you see, I know a couple of people who got fifteen, so and for plenty. So but anyway, yeah, there's no bigger bullshit than those tab opening prices. They should just not be quoted. I'm sick of people talking, quoting them. Nick, right? All horses sub six dollars last twelve months. Is that opening tab price six dollars, or is that SP six dollars? Is that Betfair SP six dollars? DK wants to know. No, okay, no, quite in Betfair SP either without taking seven percent off. God, anyway, that's, an, that's another bullshit. Okay, so it's this. It's six dollars or something, an imaginary price. I tell you what, this could be an epic show. Twenty three and fifty four, so forty two point six percent strike rate, and the pot is twenty two point nine three. Is so, that on full Kelly? Oh gosh, it's it's on. <laughs> oh Ned Kelly over here, DK's just going on a rampage. I think today we've got him on a on a good mood. I don't know what was in the red or the. The Mount the Monarchy's queen, fighting, mate. It's the queen the going. Fighting, he's, he's not handling it well. He just hasn't processed it yet. He's, he's lucky he didn't back it like the some of us sitting here. That was fun. Last 50 metres from Jupiter's just. Oh, yeah, oh yeah, 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 yeah. I saw that. I knew plenty of people have been vomiting about that. Surely you're all on All England yesterday. They're like That was, that that was, the, that omen was the omen bet, surely. A couple of steamers won and then a couple got rolled, didn't they? So, yeah, I, was, I had something on All England. Uh, the third horse there would have been a massive result for me, so... Um, yeah, it was. You had to steer. Off, you had to steer off that favourite in the yard, didn't you? Yeah, it was. Uh, it wasn't was, it? Didn't it go to all pieces in the yard? Yeah, or it was something? cast. Yeah. Cast. That's the thing. Everyone's tipping it best of the day. Then it gets to the yard and says, uh, "Alarm bells here! Get off this! What else can yeah, win?" Late at late at the place. To be late honest. at the place. <laughs> there you go. Get, you make those yard stuff. There you go. There's a tip. I went to Flemington on a rare occasion last Saturday, and I nearly fell out of my chair when the Bonus Notches race was upheld held over Spacewalk. Yeah, well, there's a fair margin. For one a- of my favourite horses only had three starts or whatever. It's run the start before was unbelievable. I had something on it and I'm, I just laughed when they put a protest in. Like as soon as you saw the head on, there was no way it was in that run. Like it hadn't, there was a run there, it nowhere near was in it. And uh, I thought it would last 30 seconds and be thrown out. Uh, well, I don't anyway, know what was going on surprise. there. Was some Blake Shin was talking Cantonese in there or? Well, and he sort of, it was his, you can't, Blake does that, you know, he, he drives him, he rides him like he's a truck driver. He sort of, he was kind to it the last hundred too. Like it yeah. wasn't, and it was sort of, you know, there's no doubt that it probably should have won if it had every chance, um, one us not just, but how, just you, could, how you could say that was definitive. his run, he took it and it was definitive. Um, I think we got lucky. What do you reckon, uh, Nico? I was on spacewalk, so I'm obviously a little biased. It's been a, it's been a good start to the show here, but um, yeah, I kind of thought that the run he was going for wasn't really there. Like when he was sort of angling into it, and he sort of he's went for a run that I thought was closing. I reckon it's more pilot error on the other half than Shin's half. But anyway, um, he definitely wasn't in it either way, was he? Like he wasn't yeah. in the run if it was there or not. I thought when the protest was sort of lodged, I thought, oh, this is millions to be upheld, and then it did get upheld. So, uh, yeah, it wasn't, it wasn't the greatest start to the day, but, yeah, I was kind of – it's a bit of it was a bit of a baffling decision. I can see the angle that, you know, that other horse probably would have won, but, like, it has a bad habit of laying in. Spacewalk was very soft late. Like, he's not fully tested. Um, I don't know. I don't know if there's, you know, d- uh, evidence to say it would have gone straight past it. Um, Maybe the stewards watched last week when Spacewalk turned it up when we were on for our nuts there too. He's been an average horse to everybody in the last oh yeah, he's uh, been, few starts. He's been hard to catch, hasn't he? But uh, yeah, I thought I thought it was an interesting decision. I think uh, if that's if that's the sort of ruling for the rest of spring, if there's protests, like just you got no idea if you're a punter. Like if that's going to be upheld, and then the Animo doesn't get upheld in a Cox Plate, like there's just no consistency there. I think that's probably the. The real issue with the um the stewarding decisions at the moment, especially in Victoria, like there's been sort of three or four this year that have been like that that just make no sense. So um yeah, I'll, ones I've gone in thinking will be dismissed have been upheld, and the other way around's happened as well. So I don't know, maybe I've got no idea. I would have sold my ticket at face value when, with like twelve or thirteen dollars or whatever it was um, when the protest was lodged happily. Mm-hmm. TK, no, no protest payout. Well, that's why. Right. What's probably- that? No, I was I was on the eventual winner. The majority of punters get paid both ways anyway. The Rex anyway, but that's all I care about. So, uh, yeah, no, I, I just – it was C. Newt, wasn't it? Yeah. So C. Newt can – he just uh, – can do – can C. Newt versus B. Shin. Well, there's uh, a couple of different talkers there. But um, anyway, Alligator Bloody, it went all right. Well, went all right. And close, close, close defeat. You went all right. You're, you're, I wish I got a, a sympathy payout there. A little 300 <laughs> would have jumped in and <laughs> life would have been a bit – life would have been a bit better. Saw that race well, though. 
Big win, big win, the winner. Mm, just over overcome, didn't he? He didn't lie in either. He said the rail straightened him up. So coming down the rail helped him, you know. It's a big win to get him, though. But T. Clark, <laughs> what a ride. That's maybe one of the best losing rides ever. Yeah. He was gutted too. I remember he rang me sort of on the way home from the airport. What Did I go too early? Did I go too early? I think it was the first horse in about 10 years of gaze that's actually knocked up and that was what cost him. Would you guys say that uh, I'm Thunderstruck and win a Cox Plate off that performance? Or? Yeah, absolutely. Yep. It has to be a short play. Like I've, I've seen the market. It, like Vizaki to be shorter than it in any race anywhere is pretty much laughable for me. And um, Mr. Brightside's obviously airborne. He's probably the only one that looks dangerous to me. It's going to be fascinating after uh, this weekend when we see Animo and Zaki clash. And then, uh, yeah, I tell you what, it starts to thin out quite, uh, quite rapidly there. So, uh, well, that's that's just still a bit up in the air too, Scoot. I think with the rain, the rain's going to hold mm. the key to whether Zaki runs or not, or they might hold him over to the Underwood. So, uh, I'd like to see him run and put a hole in Animo, but um, anyway, we'll see. It's a funny, it's a funny one. You when you you look at the look at uh, the norms in the, the final fields, and you got Eduardo, eight year old, and you got Zaki, eight year old, and they're the sort of horses that you're talking about. And there's like you look at the Caulfield Cup. I was sort of going through it with someone yesterday on the phone. There's there's not many layers to it, and then yeah, it's just um, it's crazy at the moment. Well, it's pretty scary, isn't it? You can pull Benno out of that lot too, according to O'Shea this morning. He's going to scratch. Not happy, he's not happy the waiter copped, so he's going to said I'll keep it in Sydney for the Metropolitan. Wow, yeah, he, uh, he's filthy on the waiter copped. He said it's ridiculous. So um, and yeah. honestly, it was probably the only horse I was scared of. Like it was the only horse that looked like it was priced. Pretty fairly and could improve and was dangerous. So that's that's pretty weird. But how, what weight did it get? Like, there's nothing to pull the weights up. Spanish missions got fifty eight. Like that's what that's what that's what they said. They said it's a weakish. You know, it shows how it's a weakish. Yeah, the weights is all relevant to the to, norms. The, cost, to, the, yeah, to the quality yeah. of the race. So. What's Benno done? What, what did it get? Yeah, so nothing. There was a what's his Doville? What's a Nick? I will know. Doville legend. So it's none. It's won a maiden. It's won a listed race, and it's won a group two or a group three. All six horse fields, and it's got like fifty five and a half. So what the hell does he think it's going to like? It's crazy. The weights are just high this year. I got a sneaky little tip on the drink on Saturday for El, Eldor Elderov that's come out and won the St Ledger. Oh, I yeah. could barely see when I placed the bet. You, you I forgot to tell. Everybody. Did you black the right horse? I think so. <laughs> you think so? Yeah. So interesting to see. I got no idea what what weight that that uh, that's got, but it's you know about a twenty one dollars chance. But I, th- I think I said the last couple of days how thin mm. is the stocks? It just uh, it's just absolutely crazy. Uh, we spoke about, uh, or so I think someone mentioned the Turnbull, but uh, we've mentioned a couple of times the videos, the promo videos for our uh, Mount Master Panda competition are about to drop. I tell you what, highly entertaining uh, ten to sort of twelve minute videos. There's one of Walt. There's one of Anthony Don. Uh, John McLeod and Mark Lamborn. The first one's going to drop on Monday. I tell you what, you're in fine form. Well, I don't, I don't even know. remember what you just. I was so gone. I'd already spoken <laughs> for 13 hours before it. You dragged me out on your deck there. I thought I was going to get eaten by a bull shark, and I don't even know what I said. The scary part for you is I've I've left pretty much all your answers in, and I haven't really let edited much out. <laughs> what did you even ask? I don't even know. Oh, exactly. So what we're talking about is this Master Punter semi-final. So it's uh, Mark Lamborn. There's a little graphic on screen now. It's Mark Lamborn versus uh, John Walter. Uh, we had a duck race last week to uh, draw the semi-finals, and you got John McLeod versus Anthony Don, the ex-NRL player, who's uh, a very sharp operator. So uh, there'll be two teams that play off, and there'll be a grand final a fortnight later on Caulfield Cup and uh, the Everest Day. So it's going to be a beauty. So the first one's going to be Saturday, 1st of October, and there's going to be uh, two teams going at it, and then uh, we'll just play off in the grand final, and the winner will get a trip to the Masters. So you can buy into these sides, and uh, we're going to have cap banks. So there's going to be limited uh, spaces on the team, so make sure you support uh, your charger there. There's been a bit of banner, a lot of love for Mark Lamborn. Uh, he's he's think a big he, shortener, they say. He's a big shortener. Favourite to win the whole competition. Yeah, beautiful. I thought that was uh, interesting and I guess we just price them up, maybe pick them, and then Mac bet a slight favourite over Donny. And there was a bit of love on the uh, on the Twitter sphere for Donny as well, thinking that he's a load up job as well. But interesting, Donny won't die wondering. No, I know. And if he's going to be aggressive, if Mac bet runs out of races in Brisbane, he may be in trouble. Donny's not. No, nah, he's Don- got. He can go wherever you want. Broom. He'd have a trialer <laughs> at Broom, ready to go. I would have thought so. So he's an absolute weapon, but. Um, 
Make sure uh, you get around punting form. Uh, they're the ultimate uh, comparison tool. We uh, we got those stats uh, on Nick Ryan out of those guys. I got a black book service, and you can get all the class benchmarks and sectionals, and start to uh, put all your notes next to all your runners. So make sure you uh, try them. Tracks Grand, uh, a bit of a lean week for the Tracks Grand. I should have um, posted a photo of my meal from the terrace. It was absolutely beautiful in the uh, the members there. Bumped into the I get a couple of the who's who there too. I what? heard you were on a liquid diet, so I, I'm yeah. surprised that you could you had a meal. No, it was outstanding. I think it was like five course little degustation on the champagne. Oh DK, I, I'm surprised he didn't turn up. He would have been right up his alley. But I was, I was next. Yeah, to- well, you fucking left me out. <laughs> <laughs> unbelievable. Go left me out. Unbelievable. You get invited, Nico? Did you invite to the terrace and Chiconis? I, I got a call from Scoot, and he was looking at me through the window. I was sitting there in my hoodie. He's in the suited up. Behind me on the table, and he just gives me a little wave. Yeah, that was all I sort oh, of saw from Saturday. So, so yeah. like, what about dinner? Did you get invited to Jacconi? Completely no? left, left out. out of that too. Yeah, good. <laughs> There's like eight shows on Little Birdie. Seven of them have like end of year, Christmas, once a year celebrations. What's the eighth? DK, could you name it for me? Uh, is it this one? <laughs> <laughs> oh, gee. Shaq, did you get an invite to Shaq, DK? No, yeah, no, 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 Shaq, no, 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 no Shaq here. No. I tell you, what, it was a pair of two, Shaq. I saved you all. Waiting in a 400 man lineup, and there was, he didn't even get to meet him. The winner this week is the Menangle combo. I'll tell you what, Mug Punter was the first to bag it, saying this looks terrible. I don't know if he's trolling us or he's a bit upset. But uh, roast roll, three wings, chips, and a soft drink. I'll tell you what, the only thing I can knock there is the Pepsi Max. I think that's an outstanding combo for twenty dollars and fifty. I love how he just was that keen to get in the wings. He's nailed them before he's taken the photo. I don't know. I think it says on the caption, "Photo taken three minutes too late." Definitely bite out of the burger, two wings, and gone. Oh shit! I better send this in. I don't know who it was, but it's outstanding. Menangle looks spot on there. I'd nearly go to the trots for that at Menangle. It's a fair hike. I've never been there. <laughs> I, I went to Harrow Park every time for like for how many ten years or something. I missed about five five Friday nights, and I've never been to Menangle. It's a bit like that with Mooney Valley and Melton. Like yeah. I think they've just destroyed the trots by taking it. Out. It's good for the trots folks to get in and out, but to get oh, other people and new eyeballs. Why they sold Harrow Park? I'll never Gonski. know. Like it was just. Oh, my God. I'm sure they did something with the money, but, my God, what a place it was. I'm tipping, uh, there's a few people that need Manscaped out at the trots, um, and I've got uh, one of the lawnmowers in my hand here for you or a mate uh, or, you know, that hairy uncle that you have to um, have to posse up next to at the Christmas party. He's got nose hair, like, all out of ears and just everywhere. Get him that and um, put that under the tree. So the Manscaped, the lawnmower, the weed whacker, the weed whacker is perfect for the ears and the nose. I'd be relatives. It'd be tough for a mate, surely. Well, That'd be what, or is it just like tough love? Like, listen, just. I think you should just like just chip up the um, KK, and then everyone just passes it back to Uncle Joe, who's oh, got the the, <laughs> the nose hair. I'm not. I don't hate nose hair. So, Manscaped's good as an absolute breathe. beauty. So, little birdie, twenty percent off using the code. I tell you what, not far away Christmas. I'm getting harassed of what we're going to do Christmas. What have you oh, got for Harvey's birthday tomorrow? Mate, I could be broke by tomorrow. Well, I'm broke today, Kong, so, so what is that? that? That's why I'm asking you. What have you got for him Kong. at the moment? We're giving him a wolf hat and a set of silks. No, we'll go. We'll go. To, we'll use the season holder. pass. The uh-huh. season pass for the oh. what is it? Uh, sea World. Beautiful, beautiful. It's free. Got that. I'll shout the popcorn. Sounds good. All right, uh, we're going to get into the show. Uh, today's show is going to be a beauty. We've got Donnie's best uh, cool lad was off the map, and I tell you what, this is a horse that uh, it went to sort of script. Really, he thought it was going to sit closer. MK was pretty casual. And good ride on the winner. Very it was a good ride on the winner, but as bad. It was, he was just snoozing on on cool. He kind of didn't do anything wrong, but he did nothing. He just right. did, did nothing. Yeah, he just so if he if he was a bit more aggressive, followed the winner through, maybe he gets closer. But he was just a bit passive and looked like he was just really wanted to get to the middle, didn't he? It was like I'm told one job, I've done it. Yeah, game over. Mm. But um, yeah, the winner went like a rocket. Johnny Watson's going to talk about the Randwick races. Golden Mile was rock solid last week, so hopefully everyone had a fill up there. South Airborne and uh, Group 1, George Main Stakes Day. So you should be the happiest man in town. Top Sport Steve and Cecilia, that uh, hit the line. I think you didn't mind it either. A place? Yeah, I think it was about 450 it was, or going five, very five well. Bucks. It was just a hard race for it to win, yeah. Mm, and so the Seamers were all over that at $26. They were all over Rock and Horse, as was Nico. And I was absolutely sick. Another Queensland sprinter comes down and uh, knocks all the uh, all the tired, wet, fatigued horses off in a sprint race. So there could My be something in there. Any other gate? Huh? What a rider he is! Mark oh Zara. He's there. Well, he all England yesterday. Insane. Like he's just 
He's so good. Mm, full of confidence at the moment. Bet Doctor mm. Laser of the Week. So uh, check out at Bet Doctor TV. We usually put them up on a Friday. Kiss on all full cheeks. We've got this completely uh, wrong. Heaps jumped on that promo. Uh, so you sign up a top sport and you get all uh, over the uh, the promo. So it's the top two. Oh, Finish. Mate, Ryan, and Ryan, a lay of the day. <laughs> what happened there? Hey? Won't be happening this Saturday. And Ryan, lay of the day. Whose call was that? Mm, there was a few. And Ryan. Of there's a couple, a couple that oh, right. uh, Fair enough. went like I must, a rocket, I must have had my ears closed then. Mm, bit of a black book a lot. last start too. It was flashing, flashing light run. And Ryan? Yeah. You know, a little, little oh. early Christmas present for the punters. That's it. And I'll tell you what, Saturday looks uh, that way for Caulfield. We've got the uh, the preludes and Sir Rupert Clark. So make sure you get, uh, get an account at Top Sport. Crazy price, that promo price on Kiss on All Four Cheeks. Three bucks, they bet. What's that? And you get your money back if it runs well, top, top two. Or something. Well, you have to just top two and you get three dollars. So big price. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah. Like I think it was like three seventy and four twenty in early markets. So it's like a little mm. bit of insurance. Beautiful. Mm. So make sure uh, you support Top Sport. They support us uh, for this show and obviously for the streams. Nico, the weather. What are you expecting? Uh, soft six for coffee or this Saturday? Yeah, I'd say at least a six. Mm. Um, maybe worse if we get the worst side of the rain. The problem with Caulfield Saturday is there's a lot of rain predicted on the day. So we might get to the races and it's a five, and then you get 10 mils in the meeting and it goes to an eight. Like well, it just could be absolutely cast. Anyway, we'll do our best. All right, let's try and find a winner. Caulfield race two is the first one we're going to have a look at. Thousand meter race and Extravagant Star is the favorite here $2.90. Port Albert, $5.50. Uh, Lascar's $7. Cannonball, $9. Sweetened, $9.50. Kin, 10 Miss Rosiano, 10 and Renoso, $10. The rest, 19 or oh, winner takes all 19 Destiny's Dancer, 101 That's the start and finish of it. And the man that's on everyone's lips, Nick Ryan's got this one that you like, Nico. Port Albert, you're going to show us its jump out here. Tell us why you like it. Yeah, he's uh, inside Barry here. He pretty much um, sits second under a bit of a hold here. I thought this is pretty good work. Um, he's had two jump outs leading into this campaign. He's won both of them. Um, this was pretty sharp work, kind of sitting off uh, Philosopher, who's in front, and the Heron Colors, he's very sort of sharp galloper. And then in behind him in the whites, it's our time. So um, he sort of goes around later in the day and is well-respected. And I think he just might have come back better this prep. But there was a bit of a spruik on him last prep. He sort of ran in the reduced choice stakes and was um, well-fancied there, hit the line strong behind Cannonball on that day, he ran home what, the four fastest last 200 of the meeting. And then he went to sound down, kind of let him up in a thousand meter race, and I think he was beat by a handy filly in Hellhound. Um, I don't know if he was fully, uh, you know, adept on those wet conditions, but at least he's seen it compared to a few of these. As I said, that jump out was good. Uh, gets Damien Lane aboard for the first up run. There's heaps of leaders in this race, so I think they're going to go quite fast, and you can't, might just be looking for the the strong horse to come over and wait. And he's also been gelded, so there's a lot of things in his favour here. You know, having that gelding, winning two jump outs coming into this prep, he's already shown ability. Uh, D Lane's absolutely flying, and Ryan's flying. I could see the market having a good look at this horse. Um, I think Extravagant Star is going to be a hard horse for the market to get real involved on, given a lot of her forms very early in the two year old season. Um, and the McAvoy stable just don't seem to be flying at their absolute best on the turf track. So, uh, I think the market might struggle to keep her really short, and I don't know what else they really have a look at here. Lasker's pretty as well exposed. Renosu got a, a very generous uh, pattern in favour last start where you wanted to be up there on the fence at Hawkesbury, which he was. And uh, That's, apart That from, Sweeten's going around today. It won't run. Sweeten's it's going around today. Geelong. Sweeten jumped out really well, but, yeah, if it's if it's running at Geelong, well, uh, maybe follow in there. But, uh, yeah, I just I thought this race was very much up for grabs, and he's just he looks the right sort of horse, what, strong horse, what are we, be strong late. What are we reading in then to Ollie sort of being on extravagant star? I mean, he's in Ryan's man, you know. Um, I know he does share it around MD and things like that, but Ollie's sort of did. I think look, Ollie trialed that, didn't he? But I think, I so. think Ollie did trial it, but um, maybe he committed to extravagant star. Before, before they knew it was before, running or something. You know, I don't know. I think you, you lose nothing with D-Line. No, you're not losing anything. It's just like Ollie. Might just, even be just gaining. A, just reading it that Ollie's not on it, you know. He was on the steamer yesterday, and so just uh, that would be my only answer. Why, why is Ollie not on it? But they're always generally a reason. Any thoughts, Walt? Extravagant star? I don't know. Actually, Your neck of the well, woods? extravagant star is an interesting <coughs> horse. I thought its first win was pretty average. Then it came up and sort of sat on that fast speed and, and booted away from him and looked like it sort of could be anything. And then um, – yeah, not sure what happened last time, but it was it's more of a fastish twelve hundred meter on pacer. I don't think it's really a 
thousand metre horse, and if there's other speed in the race, that might make it difficult for it. The the, the horse of Godolphins, I thought, um, Kin went very well. I know I love it when they throw him back to maiden grade, give him a kill, and the horse that dashing legend came out and won really well at Hawkesbury since that it beat. I know that was only maiden at Newcastle form, but if they go quick, it's certainly a, a, a horse that's got a nice turn of foot that can sit off them. And Renault who worked with um, Alf Cabin the other morning, didn't it? Let Did up, he? Yeah, let up the gallop. Mm, okay. Craig sat on it and Jamie was on half cabin, which you'll speak about, I think, in a minute. I think uh, the key with the Ryan horse, I think if they stay hard in the market, they're just going to run through brick walls. But if there's... Well, that's it. That's it, Scoot. I think you're spot on. So even if you uh, if you miss the price, and I think that what DK says is 100% right, and it's a real uh, hard one mentally sometimes to process, and you're like 15 into $8, then $8 into um, – Three fifty. If the market's still pressing hard on a stable like Nick Ryan, you probably got to take the price. And I learnt the hard way with uh, that horse of Hutchies. What was it? A couple of months ago. Mahumnik. Yeah. yeah. Oh God. Uh, I sort of got half a whiff that it was, uh, two two different people tipped it to me at about eleven dollars on the Friday, and then I missed. Uh, I went to back it, and it was like nine fifty. I thought, oh, well, I'll wait till it gets back out to double figures. I kept waiting, kept waiting. Six dollars fifty. Or just watched the, the, watched it just disintegrate. Wasn't ready. Stuck with the kids. Sort of half looked at the tip. Didn't really. Jerry and uh, home it went. Yeah, I, there's still got to be a point. You've got to let them go. I think. Yeah. You definitely. If you've taken the bottom of those, it's, long know, term. Think, yeah, long term. I think you'd be in a bit of pain. I'm, I'm with DK that you know the 15 to 11 when they first come up, or 15 to nine or whatever. Not don't really. don't count that. Yeah. But. Sort of nine to three fifty is a big or something like that. Mm. It's a yeah, you know, it's going to be a big difference where you chime into that. Anyway, just uh, keep a look out there. We spoke about Af Cabin, so let's uh, talk about the Caulfield Guineas next. That's race four over fourteen hundred meters. Usually a good guide to uh, the big one. Uh, Af Cabin is two dollar forty favorite here. In from two forty five, also Penko three seventy. Japanese Emperor eight dollars. Meredith nine. Amendable thirteen. Zamborghini seventeen dollars. Lethal Thoughts eighteen. Sir Bailey twenty. So Juggernaut 21 and uh, Bernina is 34. Black Samurai 81. Repo are going to have a look at here. Nico is Af Cabin running second. Yeah, this is a pretty big run in the McNeil Stakes. Uh, dropped back from 1,400 to 1,200 here. Did SP even money favourite? But this is probably the crucial part of the race where he kind of has to bump his way out, um, try and get across the heels of that one in front of him and bump out his heaven. I don't think he's going to be a horse who's you know, going to show those real strong attributes going forward. I think he probably just bumped into a better one here. Um, I thought his run was pretty credible. I think he's just looking for 1,400 metres again. This was back to 12. Uh, here he finds a much better sort of setup, I would have thought. There's not a lot of speed in this race. I kind of thought at worst, he's like one out, one back. He could lead. He could even sit outside lead. This is a race the last five years, I think, the leader's either one or outside leads one. Nothing from back in the field's really figured. So um, it's a race you want to be up there. Jamie Carr aboard, back to 1,400. Uh, I think he's definitely going to be around that mark. I would love it if the track was like a soft five for him. You know, if we're on a heavy eight, I'm probably not as confident. Soft five, I think he's probably a moral. Uh, but if we get sort of deeper into that track range, you know, some some other horses probably come into play a little bit more given uh, his debut run wasn't a real wet track and he didn't look to – like he ran second, but I think he's going to be better on top of the ground. So, um, yeah, I'm just kind of waiting for the track conditions to what I do. Uh, say if we're going to be on like a, a normal good three or good four, I'd be absolutely betting right up. I think he just probably wins here. The only danger I thought was Osipenko, who's had about 90 days off. So that's your knock. Uh, he did run second at Kabu last start and he started even money. Um, that horse has come out and franked the form since. I thought his trials leading into this were okay. Damien Lane aboard's no sort of disadvantage for him, but I thought the disadvantage was probably the map. He's drawn barrier number one. Going to need a lot of luck in behind him. Could have some uh, average horses falling back into his lap, especially if you know a few of these roughies see a chance to be close on the map here. So um, I thought he was the only danger. Uh, he'll be charging at him late, but I think Af Cabin will just have the run of the race, everything in his favour here. Don't know if this is going to be your your absolute guineas lead up, um, but I think this is definitely Af Cabin's race to lose. And uh, happy betting up, sort of if the track conditions are okay on the day. At sort of, you know, 250, I think he's going to be uh, very hard to beat. This is one of your horses, Walt, Osipenko. Yeah, I think it's like rubber stamp for me. It could be one of the best three-year-olds in the country. Like it's um, one of the most interesting horses. Why they've chosen to go here first up is, is interesting. I'm not really sure 
that stable always sort of drives you a little bit mad, but they're probably the one stable, those shortish breaks, like 60 to 120 days. I just, I've got no issue with them first up. They just seem to be better at, you know, getting strength into the legs of their horses early. I think he could lead if he wants to. I think he's a much faster horse. He's got a lot more natural speed than Af Cabin. So, and I just like lining them up. If you say, if I, devil's advocate, say the Melbourne form's pretty steady, um, like I'd say, Kabo form is is very strong. Like talking Golden Mile, um, you know, and not Golden Mile, Kabo. Uh, sorry, what's it called? The the, the, the Golden Rose. Mm. Um, I would have been happy to back it there. Obviously, Golden Mile came out from behind. Kabo's come out, and it's now favourite or close enough to it. Um, it's it stable mate for Caulfield Guineas in those races. I think I don't know what price Osapenko is. Three seventy. What is it? Three seventy. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I think it'll probably ease a bit, but I definitely think it's um it's the horse to beat. Mm, it scares me a little bit. Barrier one, Waller, D Lane, can some and not Grand Final Day. I probably that's scared. That's scares yeah, me that's for a, mine. that that's it. But and and yeah, and then to me the other one's the same. Like it's a horse that um, obviously has jumped out of the ground a bit off cabin, but its first prep he's gone sort of twelve, fourteen, then back to twelve, now back to fourteen. Uh, that would scare me too. So it, there's a, there's queries over both of them for mine, but I think. Um, Ossipenko's just had got the, 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 you know, the first prep under its belt, grounding of that. It's, it, I think it's got a lot more upside than Af Cabin does. This prep, Af Cabin's obviously a very exciting horse too. Mm, love the way he um, barged out of traffic there at Af Cabin. But um, at those prices and until we know more, I think it's uh, sit, watch and, and learn. But uh, Yeah, I don't think you need be- to dive into either price at this point. When the gates open, you'd love to have a bet just after then. Yeah, which is one of the races I'm going to talk about later. It's very similar. So. <laughs> The, uh, the feature race of the day at Caulfield is race number seven, and that's the Sir Rupert Clark, and all the talk is around I wish I win, whether we'll get a start or not. And I think it's second emergency, so needs a couple to fall over to take its place in the race. So $3.10, uh, taking up a heap of percentage there. Ayrton's second favourite, five fifty. Tuvalu is being, or Tuvalu, sorry, seven fifty into six dollars Showmanship six fifty. Uh, the wet weather definitely helps his cause. Dragon Leap, eight dollars. Halal is twelve. I am Superman, thirteen. Graceful Girl, fourteen. Uh, Shalalo is fifteen dollars. Sinawan is fifteen dollars. I think we're asking about or wondering where that horse would pop up. Asa, he had a win last start, and I was definitely not on eighteen dollars. Dallas Ham, one of my boys, twenty dollars, and then you got uh, twenty one dollars or better. The rest. Law of Indices was uh, a horse that I thought would be suited to Caulfield, but again with. Um, a little bit of wet weather around. I'm not convinced he wants it very, very wet, and I think there's been a little bit of money for uh, Just Folk at 50s into $34. But um, that's the market there. Let's have a quick look at uh, a couple of replays and talk about this one. I wish I win. Let's have a look at uh, this win again. You can see it in the moody nose roll with uh, the white and the chitty colours, I think, just um, rambling out to the outside. Exciting horse, this one, Nico. Yeah, it was a big win this day, wasn't it, DK? He's rated, what, 11 links above pretty much on the punting form data. The market was relentless in backing him. Um, look how sort of dominant he is late there. Yeah, yeah, very, very impressive. Yeah, he's going to – yeah, everything I, – I thought he had improvement to come in the yard. So um, I think everything he did there on that day, if he can replicate it, I think he will win if he's here. Um, I'd be happy betting up on him at $3 if he's in this race. Uh, I think he's probably – you know, got the scope off that to be either best horse out of this race and be a very handy horse here in Australia. Um, I don't think the map's too bad for him. Barry number 14, Jamie Carr probably just gets into the running line and has a similar run to what he had there. They're going to go quick here. It's Rupert Clark. Um, I don't think he has to elevate off his figures too much. Uh, he's probably going to see a bit faster on race than what he saw first up, but, uh, you know, how strong he was late, I don't think that's going to worry him too much. The problem is he's pro- he's probably not going to get a start. I would be saying he's you know, at least 10 to 1 to get a start at the moment. Like he's, I think the problem will be, I think Halal will come out, draw him 20, doesn't like wet tracks. I reckon there's a chance he definitely comes out. I think Dragon Leap's definitely going to get a start. I think I Wish I Win's problem will be, there's not a lot of rain predicted coming into like Saturday. There's rain predicted on the day. Come 7.30 in the morning, you know, a horse like I'm Superman may not want to be out, but come race time. They might be thinking also. Oh, this this, this other horse here, Dragon Leap's the other. Is its first emergency, isn't it? Yeah, I think he. So I think he'd be a big chance to get in. This was a big run. What fourth in the Memsey? This is always not a bad lead up for the Rupert Clark around the sort of the good horses there. I'm Thunderstruck, Power and Home, Alligator Bloods on his back. 
Yeah, I've, I've sort of backed him early in the markets. Um, I think he's a, a horse, who, you know, he's probably going to get a similar run to I Wish I Win if they're both there. They're just going to be in the running line. I thought showmanship was right well, in the game. Your showmanship, man. Remember, you were kicking up for him. He needed, obviously, needed a run at the ball and that, but then he, he came out and went to Sydney and went terrific, didn't he? Yeah, yeah. Sydney run was um, great. You know, he, he ran on a heavy ten at Warnable and he's only beaten the length. I think, you know, people might say, oh, does he really handle the wet tracks? But soft six, he won 1,400 metres at some, Caulfield. Something told you he was vulnerable that day. The market did, didn't it? Yeah, exactly. So, so, um, so, 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 so the alarm bells went out there to say he was vulnerable. That's what I, put, I would put in my comment, vulnerable. Big, big last 600 first up, had mm. a bit of a gap between the runs, so I think that'll suit a horse like him. I think the sting out will probably suit him as well with the horse that's had a bit of issues. So, uh, yeah, I think showmanship will probably start favourite if I wish I win's not here. Uh, I reckon Ayrton is very vulnerable on the wet track. Didn't like the trial. The gallop looked a bit iffy as well. He just doesn't look like he's um, fully comfortable this prep. His action isn't that great. So uh, I'd be happy to risk Ayrton. Uh, he's... There's probably no planet where I could back Ayrton in this race. I thought Showmanship and Dragon Leap are the two for mine. Tuvalu's definitely in the game, and I think Just Folk's probably the best roughy. But if I wish I wins here, he will be winning. I think this is yeah, this is a a race here. you can sort of make. I sort of thought that Graceful Girl might be a a bit of a knockout or law of indices, but as soon as you get worse than you know a five, those horses sort of struggle to find their best. Have you got any angle? No, I just can't understand what the market's obsession is with it and when it, well, it keeps coming up oh, favourite right. in all these big races. It's very weird because it just doesn't seem to have come on from what it showed early, whether those little things, Issues. niggles it's had have just have held it back or whatever. But watching it versus the replay uh, Nico just showed, I, I know what horse I want to be on if uh, if uh, is it Moody's horse lines up. Yeah, that's a that's a problem. We're talking about two horses, Dragon Leap and I Wish I Win, and they're not even in the field yet. So. It's going to be chaotic depending on uh, how the field uh, plays out there. But uh, it looks like an absolutely cracking day out there at Caulfield. And make sure you sign up to Nico's uh, Manning Yard Mail, 25 bucks a week, and uh, you get his insights three to five minutes before the jump. So if you want to back or lay one and have a, a big press, Nico will give you the final word there. So it's uh, unadmissible if uh, you're looking to take your game to the next level. Well, let's talk about uh, Randwick. It's... Uh, Going to be wet, uh, heavy rain overnight last night. Uh, my guys in Sydney have told me, and uh, probably not much hope of an upgrade. I thought all your guys had left the building, like uh, BZ's run away. Uh, Ask Man's been back. Where's he? Is he in Larry's Sydney or Melbourne Sydney. these days? Yeah. Sydney? Yeah. He's back? Yeah. Mm, the Ask Man. I saw him tipping on, tipping on. Uh, he found that winner that was one on protest. Yeah. He's back. What the is Ask Man. No, he's going all right. Mm. Nick Ashman on Twitter, he, can, uh, he goes hunting value, so make sure you check him out. Value hunter. He's a great man, Larry. Yeah, I, I've set up for like a seven. Have you? Yeah, I think. What else can you do? Mm. <laughs> what else can you do? I don't think it's going to be much better. Mm, it's just typical Sydney. Yeah, that's okay. Shit house. Mm. Ram, but race three is the uh, Peachester Lodge shootout mile. Good old horse he was. Shootout, uh, 600 meter race. Obviously, Grayson Harmony's a favourite, $3.80. Blazer Trail, five fifty. No rider might come out. Kabosh is six dollars. Uh, Arctic Thunder six fifty. Bazooka seven dollars. Kiss a bride seven. Giannis twelve. Turn on the charm sixteen. And Cap Fever is fifty one dollars. Uh, we all got uh, wallowed with uh, Grace and Harmony last start. So mm, gosh, does it just turn around and absolute piss in? We're gonna have a quick look at uh, the replay of Kabosh. Last time in the uh, the Walla white and blue last. Most important here is it missed it about four, so it was like six length detached. It had Reese Jones on it. They um, didn't sprint home too well. So this is Waterford, is it down the outside? So you got Waterford Mahogany. I think that's uh, what's it called? The other thing. The other thing got nutted the other day. It uh, uh, what's it? Colini or something like that. One of Wallers. So it's it's come out and got beat a nose in a wrong race. Uh, Waterford's come out and won really impressively since. And Kabosh has sort of totally missed the starts back there with um, with Reese flapping around on it. Now it gets Bowman um, <laughs> has had a trial since. So again, we're going we're stepping into the magical wonderland of second up Waller, and uh, also we've, we're coming off Grace and Harmony off a second up flop. What does it do third up? So I, these are the races I just love to bend myself over <laughs> in. Um, most importantly, I've I've restricted myself to a price bracket, and this horse is like <laughs> seven or eight dollars, whatever it is, Kabosh at the moment. Uh, Bowman, on as I've said, there's a, sp a race with no speed. If this horse happens to step at all and, and rolls forward, I can't see how it just won't be strong. So uh, I think it's the wrong price. Um, a little bit of a worry there that uh, the horse that Nico and I have found uh, over the last few weeks, it just never runs as Blazer Trail. I just hope it lines up. 
uh, especially if there's some sting out because um, it'll be a decent deduction. Uh, keep an eye on changes of tactics because I think one of the two will definitely go forward, Kabosh or Giannis, and I think they can both run very well from that position. Um, Grace and Harmony scares the life out of me, but I've got to take it on just because it's short. And uh, and I'm happy to be on Kabosh. And if there's a change of tactics with Giannis to be the one to roll forward, I'd have something on it too. I think they're both about the right same price. Mm-hmm. Nico, any insight around Blazer Trail? Uh, I think last year he was just scratched because of the wet track. That's sort of um, all I sort of heard. So, uh, yeah, it, like if Walt's right and it's a seven, he's got no chance. So uh, I'd be surprised if he ran. Might have to send it up here to Queensland. It's beautiful up here. He's been a bit of a victim, hasn't he? Like he's absolutely flying this horse, and he can't find a track anywhere to race on. He's like fifty-seven days between runs, and he's had about he's been eight scratchings or something. He's been he would be better off going to the paddock at this stage and coming back for the summer. Yeah, like true. it just doesn't look like it's going to work out for him. Kind of gets to a point now where even if it was like a five or something, you kind of nearly got to take him on because it's like what is it? Eight weeks between runs. Mm. It's um, it's not easy. It is especially not easy. at a mile. All right, so Kabosh and then a uh, small sort of. Say yeah, I just oh, Kabosh, I'm happy to lock in because I think it'll run well no matter where it goes. But if it goes forward, I'm really happy. And um, and Giannis is the one I'm – if there's a little change of tactics to roll forward, I definitely think he's ready to win. Okay, so provided a clean jump, what price do you think Kabosh should be? Oh, if it's outside leader, leader, I'd take $3. Beautiful. It's a magic number. All right, well, make sure you uh, shop early there. That one will keep going off. The big race of the day up there in uh, Ramwick is race seven, and that's the George Main Stakes. I picked this one just to uh, just to create a little bit of banter here. I know yeah. everyone's got uh, a couple of big opinions. Animo's a favourite at a dollar ninety five. Zaki's three thirty. Fangirls nine dollars. Profondo eighteen. Hinged nineteen. Uh, Dewey twenty. Converge twenty one. Ice Bath twenty six. Might not uh, line up there. Do you think DK is going to have the Quinella here, Zaki and Fangirl? <laughs> Wonderfelia 26 Maximal 101. Going to have a quick look at the replay of uh, Animo last start. Well, do you want to talk about it? Yeah, so it was a nothing race on paper because it was just a sit sprint. But this horse certainly, you know, has ridden a little bit closer than he likes and went to the wrong part there. Uh, a couple of horses did get away with it, sort of ducking back to the fence and sprinting up and getting off it. Um, and then this horse obviously had the class to do it. Uh, the form's not been like super tested since probably fangirl was the other one but came down the middle of the track in the right part benno's come out and run okay since uh profondo's you know profondo hinged has not been seen since so i think ice by uh, what is ice bath came out and run really well behind uh zaki wasn't it so it's mm. probably the one zaki's the uh, the other replay we're gonna have a look at here yeah. so it had it had similar favorable conditions just pretty much handed the race um mm. for whatever reason they just refused to breathe on profondo at the start and uh, and that was basically the end of the race. As soon as they, they let this horse control, you yeah, got a horse like um, Maddie Smith thing there sitting outside at a mare that's you know pretty pretty steady horse. And, and Ice Bath was the only horse that's kind of in form and likes the conditions and had everything against it and ran home really well against the pattern. So it was basically a, a one horse race, and um, and it got away with it. So looking at uh, Saturday's race, yeah, well, and it's, the market dollar ninety five Animozaki three thirty. And what, there's talk of... I'm surprised that Animo's favourite just because of the control that Zaki's going to get. This is what you said, $1.90 Animo? $1.95 Animo, three thirty Zaki, Fangold $9. Yeah, so, well, Zaki's got the... the just, just go straight to the front again. Profondo, Hinge, sit behind it. I doubt that they're going to jam Hinged or do anything crazy uh, for it. It doesn't help really anything in the race. So it looks like Zaki gets full control. Then McDonald's got to work out what he does on Animo and... And, uh, you know, he's going to have to put up a similar performance to Ice Bath, like most things against him, you would imagine, to overcome um, Zaki's soft, you know, run in front. So I, I, I'm a little bit surprised there's not – there's that big a gap between them. Would I want to back Zaki? No, he's not one of, really one of my horses, but this is a race where he gets, you know, everything to suit him. So um, he, you would imagine he's going to be in the finish. I think there's some, uh, some nice horses in this race, like Van Gerl and Hinge, but I don't think this is their race. Um, Where's Dewey at? Yeah, I, I think Dewey's now locked in as, um, you know, it's got the nice weight, everything's on plan for the races down the, down the line and anything that it picks up, you know, is is um, is a bonus. So I would say that, you know, if Dewey gets caught three wide, it's going back. It's not going to be jammed mm-hmm. forward. It's not going to be ridden out of its comfort zone to win any races along the way. So I think she'll run well. She'll put on a similar run to last start. She might go a little bit better and, you know, uh, it'll just it'll just be another tick in a 
in the box. I, I don't think that this this race is really on their radar. Um, you know, as a as a as an issue, whether it wins or not. Melbourne boys, uh, DK, Nico, you both got strong opinions on Animo for different reasons. One loves, one hates. I I do agree with Walt. I think there's probably too much difference between them in the market. Like, there's no way Animo should be a dollar ninety five and Zaki three thirty. I think Animo is the most likely winner. Um, just having a quick. I haven't fully gone into the race, but uh, I think he just might have a bit better of a setup, and I think there's a chance he may have come back better this preparation. But you know, he's going to have everything there to you know chase Zaki. He's going to have to show everything he's got. Um, yeah, I would sort of be thinking there should be you know like two fifty and well, pick. two eighty. You know pick. what I mean? Like to two fifty each or two even. Like, Do you think there's a big chance McDonald just goes bang and jams him straight outside Zaki, and chance. then from that position one two? Well, wouldn't what, you? What do you? What do you? Jewel. It looks. It looks like the most likely outcome. Barrier summit. seven, barrier eight, bang. And that's that's an interesting. Um, what happens? That's a race. It's a good race. Yeah, I think it'll be a great race to watch. Mm-hmm. Um, it's it's kind of what we need, isn't it? A couple of good wait for age horses going head to head. Zaki rated extremely well. First up, I saw that on a lot of sort of databases, including punting form. Dan O, our man, he sort of had him rating very well first up. So. Uh, yeah, it's going to be a fascinating contest, but uh, I'd probably lean Animo. I think it's going to be Animo Spring. I think he might be the uh, the dominant force, but I doubt there'll be much between them on Saturday. Both nowhere near Grand Final Day. I think well, you, you've got to fact that in. If that's you're exactly betting. right. Both second up, aren't they? That's what I was thinking. What was saying that Animo was a bit further forward last start, just sitting behind the leaders, and now he's going to say, "Oh, put outside lead." Where James Cummings always conservative, wants them to find a bum. Grand Finals. Two runs away or whatever. So um, Zaki could get own lead, but the, how wet the track's his biggest concern, I would think. You know, is firm it, of footy, you could, you could, you know, skip and put a good gap on him like that horse did last week, alligator blood. And then the, if he's a good horse, he'll run him down. Maybe they're kind of taking the angle like they don't want to flatten Zaki too early in his prep, like mm. two real wet track runs. But like, you know, his two most recent runs on heavy tens, one he ran second in the Queen Elizabeth, beaten by the lanes pretty much, thinking over, finding the, the better lane. And he's won first up on the heavy 10. Like, there's his last two real wet track runs. I think you could put down the Eagle Farm sort of Gold Coast prep, you know, and the Doom and Cup in Hollandale. He's probably just, he'd already had his grand final. They'll just push it on. I, if it was a heavy 10, I'd back Zaki. He'd already achieved. Oh, I, I think the wetter the track is, the better it is for Zaki. There you go. Yeah, I'm surprised they're a bit running scared of the wet tracks. I think that he's probably advantaged on them. But mm-hmm. anyway, they, I can see the angle that they don't want to bust him up early in the prep, though. But. A, a fangirl and do I any knockout hope if the two leaders fall over or they're going backwards? Oh, you'd have to say, oh, for fangirls first up run, you'd have to say it's got a good chance. It's, this, um, this, and this, it's going to be last the inside here, you'd say, so it gets a conservative run and if, you know, everything falls its way, maybe, but they're two pretty good horses to try and mm. run over the top of. Yeah, it's a tricky one. Uh, yeah, track, it'll, um, the track rating will be really, really important on that one, but... Um, Hopefully it's a ding dong battle. We're sort of, as you guys say, uh, we're definitely due for one. But um, fascinating contest, and let's hope J Mac just punches outside Zaki and they just go hammer and toll. Another uh, King Kong battle here. We've got is race eight, uh, the shorts eleven hundred meter race here. Nature Strip is the favourite, two dollars thirty. Eduardo three fifty. Mizzou is seven dollars. Lost and running nine dollars. Classic Legend fourteen dollars. Overpass seventeen dollars. Mars Crusader, 20. Ethelric, 34. Sorry, uh, Andermatt, 41. Handle the truth. Shelby's in there at 100 to 1. Uh, Anthol is there at 151 and rocketing by. But uh, I think we're going to have a look at uh, Eduardo uh, first up. His replay last time and pretty dire conditions there and he put a hole in him. It was fantastic, Walt. Yeah, and he, like he was very well placed in this race, very well weighted. Obviously, the betting late was the strange part and... He sort of raced a bit fresh, if anything, outside lead and uh, and put him away. And I think that he'll improve off this significantly. Like, I know that he's got a dynamic, fresh record and he loves the conditions and, you know, all of that kind of stuff. But I, I would say that the betting may be suggested that, you know, he was, I know the stable were keen, but, you know, probably had improvement to come. And I think he raced that way. And I, I just like, it looks like he's come back better. I know that um, Nature Strip looks like it's going well, but I think the um, inside draws makes it, you know, if if Nash was on Eduardo, I'd sell DK and throw it on. I'd sell DK. <laughs> it's it's um, it just looks too good to be true to me. This uh, the setup for Eduardo, and and it's very similar. Like the I just don't understand why it's not favourite. Oh, well, I think the pattern's been Nature Strip wins first up, has a has a spell second up, and then comes out and blows them away in the Everest. So there could 
be a little train of thought. Waller might be soft on him after a trip well, to the UK, and not he's still be- got to do that. You know, like what has that taken out of him? He's never done that before. Mm. He's never gone to the UK. I know it. Like they, what do they lose? Like 30, 40 kilos. Again, it's a stable that's very good at handling these sorts of things. But if he's going to have a buy to me, it's this time. And from one or two or whatever he is, it's basically one, I think, because he's the inside horse is not overly fast. Um, yeah, it just looks like with Shelby 66, my God, should be racing at Dubbo today. He's um, – you would think that Eduardo just goes wherever he wants to go. He's got that that run under his belt and and he, if the wetter the better. I know that Nature Strip handles it as well, but holy heck, he's just got so much in his favour for me here, Eduardo, that he's going to take all sorts of beating. It would take something crazy like maybe Rachel King having a spaz on overpass and <laughs> – and destroying the race completely or something that 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 may throw a cat amongst the pigeons but if the two if the two of them stay out of trouble Eduardo and Nature Strip I think Eduardo will get him Marzu lost and running classic legend any Dubbo, Dubbo, Dubbo. sorry uh what no <laughs> yeah, um, Everest, not Dubbo. classic engine won't be there it'll just be having a barrier trial um he yeah, won't Everest be ready until the he won't be ready until the Everest and Marzu is entitled to be big odds here. If he beats him, he's, he shows that he's up to him, but he's entitled to be not big odds, you know, what, six, seven, eight, nine dollars here. Mm. Um, especially against, you know, two heavyweights. Any thoughts down out of Melbourne? Yeah, tricky one, isn't it? Uh, Nate Strip, definitely the better horse. Um, I'd probably lean his way over Eduardo, but, you know, there's there's enough to say that Eduardo can beat him in the right sort of setup, and Walt's sort of saying he might get that on Saturday. Well, his trial was, you know, really good, really controlled for Nature Strip, um, which you've sort of seen from him recently. So, yeah, I'm probably sitting towards the uh, not having a bet in this race, but um, yeah, it's going to be a fascinating contest. I think the the overpass comment that may sort of throw a bit of a a bit of a cannon in the works for the races, wouldn't it? If he sort of pushed forward and took them on um, and made it a real race for both of them, but uh, I, I can't see the closer really getting into it. I thought Classic Legends trial was extremely average uh hated his action i'd be surprised if he can sort of come back and do much this prep so uh yeah i think the the winners from one or two and they're probably the same in the everest i would have thought they they looked at two this spring mars is the only one really that can come up isn't he but he's got to do it oh, i agree with eduardo yep no eduardo looks if he's going to beat him it'll be this weekend ready to roll yeah i just hope abdala rides him positively you know doesn't get too scared and whatever just yeah, get after him, make it a race. Mm, free bet. I'd love to take. Uh, I'd lo- I'd be on Eduardo as well. I tell you, what, he he might have to ride for his life, Brent Navdo. I don't know what's going on here, but um, he, he's been boned from Benno. Like uh, W Pike. Imagine said, being boned for him for Pike. Another like <laughs> like that, I thought Avdala. That. that was Avdala's horse, Benno. I've been hosing him, and I feel terrible now. But Who, it's Brenton? just no, or not Pike. him. He, no, no, no. Pike. He's just you watch. There was a race there yesterday. He's just gone confidence wise. He's they're walking. Uh, like nearly anchor drop, uh, horses like two and three horses come from behind him and around him, and he just sits there like it, and then backwash. Now the next thing he's nine wide and looking for runs. Like he's just, he's just a fish out of water. Then he's on a horse later in the day that's you know should race in the first four, uh, the poacher. Or he's trying to restrain it. Next thing he's four wide, throwing on its head. He's just completely cast the poor fella. You reckon? He, is he some chance to go back to WA? Are they no, they shouldn't take him. Like he maybe like. <laughs> Easter Island or somewhere. I don't know. He's he needs to go somewhere where he can just learn how to ride. I don't know, maybe he needs to ride for Gay Wardhouse for three months and just learn how to ride a leader or something. I don't know, hold the horse. Get maybe Tim. do a few bloody what are they Timmy. called? I've never been in the gym. What's it called? A couple of bloody wrist curls or something. Holy heck. Have a few more Roy Bulls, something to strengthen the wrist up. <laughs> maybe he's gonna be like a few beyonds. I saw him talking in his interview where uh he said he's getting their confidence up by winning trials by twenty five lengths with O President and Overpass. Um so maybe he's got to do that, just just find a winner. I tell you, it's probably the most interesting runner of the day for me. It depends. There's okay. obviously uh, cross talk where it's going to go and that, that race may fall away a bit with the Cameron, but her presence dead set. I can't wait to see what Bjorn does with that horse. Awesome. It, it won by, what, 14 or something, didn't it? But, uh, um, yeah, he looks like he's got it airborne. I, I don't know what the hell he does when he does those things, but they invariably come out and run well compared to most stables that come out and go like a lawnmower, so. He's, he's good at it, Bjorn. Yeah, that's that's a cracker. The Bill Ritchie, you got Cross Torgo president, and it's been backed as well. I, I think it'll give it a shake. Oh, president, it's a bloody good horse. I don't know. I don't know how the hell Bjorn got hold of it. Did he buy it at the English sale or something? Or it would have gone for ridiculous. Three was it? They sacked it while didn't they? I think pretty sure they sold it. It's in his colours, so I, I would imagine they would have bought it. 
Mm. It must have been a decent sale. It would have been half a million plus, surely. Yeah, I think maybe 600. Mm. I had a guess, but I can't, I can't quite remember. Because there's, there's, there's just too many of them that they just offloaded the wallers. Some oh. actually went back. I think we spoke at it. We spoke about that. Mm. I was always, the money's crazy. Rancham was one. They they sold him, and now he's yeah, back. That, I think it was that same sale. I think there was like four or five of them. Yeah, there. there was uh, yeah, Ranchan, maybe another one too. But um, like I was talking to someone yesterday, what race are you targeting with a horse? And I was thinking, you know, they'd take it, you know, go to Melbourne or whatever, and they're like, oh no, I just could run it through its grades, then run it in the Rose Hill Cup at seven hundred and fifty thousand. The Rose Hill Cup, like, and you're thinking it's a, I think it's on one of the days, and all the features would be full of. Whatever's left in the Rose Hill Cup will dead set be a Saturday race for 750. Like it's just some of the, the trainers are doing the right thing, just running them through their grades and trying to pick off these races that are probably worth about five times more than they should be. Mm. Bold, but some of the prize money is just mm. fucking fat. Unbelievable. Any wonder that uh, they're going through the ring uh, so uh, heavily or overpriced, as you say. Well, make sure you check out racingwatch.com.au for more of uh, Johnny's action. Almost got a lot last week with uh, the alligator blood. So he's always um, just dropping things in there. I just couldn't help myself. Last little prod on the Last way out. Jab. I just, just keep finding a ticket. Every drawer I open has got another ticket in it with the blood <laughs> in it. And, you know, it causes blood. It just feels like I'm getting stabbed again. The next uh, we're going to talk about, actually, a, um, a tried horse or a bought tried horse because it's time for uh, Donnie's Best. G'day, boys. Donnie's Best for this weekend. We're going to the Gold Coast, starting with the best bet, race eight, Mata to Wakbi. Jack Bruce is absolutely flying up here. This horse is having its second start for him. It tried like a rocket before its first up run where it just got beat and got a little bit tired late over 1,200 Eagle Farm. The step up to 1,350, the inside barrier and the senior jockey going on all are going to point to this horse winning. I think $2.80 is a fair price and I'm happy to back it at that price. So that's race eight, Mata to uh, The second bet will go to Randwick, race four, Stray. It's one right down the bottom of the way. It's only carrying 53 kilos for Tommy Berry. They tried to stretch him out, uh, stretch her out to an Oaks campaign last preparation. Probably didn't work out. Uh, first up last prep, it absolutely bowled in at the Kenzo. It's childlike, an absolute rocket. It should map forward to midfield in the running line. And at $26 and $5.50 a place, I'm really happy to bet up, especially on the place line. So that's race four stray. And the best bet is race eight, Mata Tawakbi at the Gold Coast. Good luck, boys. I think when we had uh, Jack Bruce on the show, there were still shares available in Mata Tawakbi. What P? That's X Bjorn. Well, let's go back. Did he say yeah. g'day boys or gay boys? Yeah, well, you can call us whatever you like. I think he said gay boys. <laughs> I'm actually feeling happy about that. I'm all right. If there's that like happy and gay, yeah, that's me. I tell you what, Jack Bruce is absolutely airborne. Let's have a look at uh, the uh, seasonal ROI figures. Last 50 starts, had 35 runners, 11 winners, uh, seven seconds, four thirds, 31 percent, and 62 the place at 34 dollars flat no, staking. I don't on think SP. there's any trainer in Australia more up and about than him. And you expected it, and you hoped for it when he sort of kicked off, and you just hoped that he'd get on off on the right foot. But he's probably exceeding everybody's expectations with horses that are all cast off so far. So imagine mm. when he gets his own systems in place, he's going to be very dangerous for a long time Spe- to come. Especially up here. Mm. Mm. Too good. Jack Bruce, you, you saw him here and he's just absolutely airborne. So I'm not sure that I, I've had a look at that one. So Rocket Rings a Bell, back that last one of its last two starts. But um, uh, Jack's Heath placing. has got it now, hasn't he? Yeah. Mm. Yep. Jack's yep. placing his horses exceptionally, so can't really tip you out of that. 280 in the market. And then uh, the other one was uh, race four, number 16, and it was straight. Walt, it's a uh, really on Saturday. You had a look at that race? Briefly. Um, hang on, race eight. Uh, I th- no, I thought it was uh, race four. Race four. Number no. 16, so it's Arnold, Root, Silent Oh, Impact. yeah, Arnold's very short. Five yeah, point it's, Ida. It's, we, we sort of talked about it last week. It's one of those horses that's resuming back in distance and, and is, you know, very dangerous and often you can get nice odds about them because their their form's coloured because they're racing in, you know, unsuitable races just trying to get black type and stuff. So... Yeah, it's a dangerous horse for sure. Uh, is it an easy race to win? Absolutely not. Um, but you're getting odds to compensate, so I'm not knocking that. This could be Nico in the uh, Top Sports Steamers here. Caulfield race eight, number four, and it's Chain of Lightning, 2,500 at 290. So I think that's the kiss on all four cheeks form. Happy to have that ticket, Nico, in race eight? Yeah, I, I would have thought so. Um, looks her kind of race. Uh, maps pretty well. I think she probably land one out, one back. Uh, if it's a real wet track, I don't think it will worry her too much from a tight point of view in the yard. She's a grey, DK. Grey's in the wet. Just auto bet. 
So would yeah, bet. Would, would <laughs> bet. Wouldn't be too worried about that ticket. <laughs> what um what happened to the, in the wash up with that uh, favorite last start that it ran past? Because if it if it like if the time was good, I haven't seen that. It, it, its wins have just been outstanding. Chains of lightning, like, absolutely. Uh, I think it was end of sounded like it was end of prep, passive aggressive. The, that the favorite, time or whatever so. was okay or whatever for the race and yeah, rated solid. Um, I think she'll only she won't even have to run to that rating to win it. I wouldn't have thought. Yeah, cool. so um, she could rate down and still win it. Just had enough. Uh, the next one here is uh, Ramwick Race One Number Eighteen Robage Three Hundred at Twenty One Dollars here in the highway. So that's Doesn't a, this guy kill you, Terry Evans? Oh my god, selection. he just kills you like <laughs> that. That thing went around again the other day, Sir Ravenelli, and he carved the hell out of it, nearly killed another three people. And then this horse, poor Randy, like ran into 37 dead ends in that last start and he leaves Randy on it again. So uh, the horse is flying. It's it's probably the best highway I've ever seen, but if they really go quick, this horse will be flying home. Mm. We do harp on it, but cool lad's a classic example and there's many examples. Mark Zara, the difference between winning and losing is picking the right riders. Well, poor old Pike was the last rider of all England. What, go back and watch that and yeah. then watch what, what, watch what Zara four, did on it and four tell wide me. At Hawkesbury or something? Four and five, restraining, yeah. over racing, throwing its head in that third defence, darts through a gap. Like, not many riders get at home yesterday, probably. And, and then, yeah, anyway, it's a big, <laughs> it's a big factor. Uh, the next one here is one of your horses, uh, Walt, I think. You got a lot in the barn. Race six, number seven, Russian Conquest, $219. Oh, is that another? Is that another jab? No, it's scratched anyway, so it's pointless. It's another jab. It's Who, out. I actually like that race. And That's think, a good little I think race. Star Lass will be winning that race. Mm. I thought um, the interesting run I thought was good. Good first up was Wolverine. Wolverine, yeah. I just think North Stars had the extra run under its belt. The rain, it'll be up on speed, and it'll be want to be good to sort of run it down. Wolverine, the gap between runs all. I think it's sort of next start, and uh, yeah, I thought Wolverine, the two Bash brothers there, Wolverine and Seven Vales, could both run very well. Madame Pomeroy, the the knockout at thirties or something. Hmm. Yeah, cracking little race there. Mm. I'm on Wolverine, long term bet on a thousand guineas. So you watch it running the flight stakes. Not, not, a, not going it's going to the flight stakes. Wolverine. Oh, well, you. that's the plan. They oh. always change with the wind, but that's where it's supposedly going. Yeah, I got multi's win and place. You do eight for a thousand guineas, so that's confetti. So how good are futures? Oh, well, it's all right. Probably Terrible. win both. Are they on the same day? Terrible. All right, that's. Uh, I think that's it. I think we've bored everyone to death. DK, it's good to have you back. Good to have you back on top of your game. Any any mail today, Geelong, DK? No, no, I'm on a, I won't see Aussie for six months now, well, footy season, but uh, no. Tate Jura Saturday, Nico. That's me. Mm. Find the lure jobs at Find the, the best leaders track in Victoria. So um, I was going to ask you about your horse today, but you've copped another scratching. Copped another scratching, yeah, because <laughs> the, the rain cones are overnight. But uh, Anyway, we're, that's what we're dealing with at the moment. Uh, mm. Just here, rain, here, there, it's and everywhere. Tough going at the provincials at the moment, isn't it? There's just... Like even Friday looked like a great meeting at Ballarat and then it was going to be a heavy 10 out synthetic. Yeah, it's, and it's gone to still, synthetic, uh, yep. Haven't got a meeting Sunday. It's Flemington Sunday, no country meeting. Hmm. So anyway, we're, uh, we're bad on, Nico. October might be your month. All those little meetings. Yeah. Dika, out wide. Out wide, out wide. Menangatang, St. Arnold, all those joints. Witchy? Witchy proofs on Derby Day. So anyway, I wonder if they get out wide. Further out wide, the better for me. Unbelievable stat that Munzee dropped uh, on Twitter yesterday. Two, it was the second time for the whole year. I think we talk, talked about it off air. It was the second time Warwick Farm had been a good four for the whole year in Sydney. That's crazy, isn't That's it? That's true. And I was actually surprised when I saw, like, you know, a couple of days ago checking in and seeing it was a four. I was like, had a double check and the rail out. I'm like, my God, this might actually play like a real racetrack. Mm. Um, so, there, yeah. There's yeah. a weather watch. There's, there's a little sneaky weather watch on a maiden today called Imran Khan, another one that they put up $21, the mystical 21 into $4.60, but if it stays dry, it should run very well. What, what race? Kembla Grange race five today, Imran, first starter for the mighty Sam Kavanagh. He's the, the, one of the Mexican runaways. Well, so it's been 21 into 420. It's another one of the specials that 21 never existed. But um, So we're allowed to take the 420? No. <laughs> it's an interesting. Also, I, I think I, I think I think it's a. I, I believe or I've read it's a. Ro- someone's created a robot, a pricing robot to knock those things off straight away. Well, yeah. Yeah, into the into the tab, they move too fast, don't they? And I saw someone, a horse or someone said, "Oh, the robot beat me." You know, he's there trying to, you know, alarm set trying to knock it off, and he said, "Oh, the robot beat me to the." First price. What about him going out there? Oh, everybody get into the sports bet. If anyone can get on sports bet futures, that's the sign that you need to take up card collecting or (laughs) another uh, another thing. Because if you can get on to win more than five dollars with sports bet on futures, uh, alarm bell should be ringing. Uh, 
and I think there's some T's and C's around it, and then just spear, spearing people into 200% markets. 200? Try 400. When's Solarium? When's Solarium bet starting? End of the month? Can't be long. I think, I think JJ, JJ, JJ's last Saturday. Finishes up Saturday. So is sure. Kelton going to do the Saturdays? Is he? I assume he. Yeah, he's, he's on so fire. He's, he was Balaclava Cup there yesterday. All the horses tipping were just going off the lux. He's at... He's doing a great job. Have we got to 100 bookies yet? We've got to be closing in. 80, uh, 86 or something. That was at the start of September or the end of August. So Yeah, I think it's, I think we're to 90 at least. So, Jesus. Hmm. I, I tell don't know. You, I don't we, know if they're we all mad have, or all geniuses. I can't work it out. We might so have, they're not bookies. They're managed, managed trading services, Walt. They're poker no machine bookies. rooms. Absolutely. But, no uh, bookies. Don't call them bookies. It's, that's, that's, that's misnomer. I don't even call them anything. Parasites. Well, Managed trading services. Some good news. We got we got one of a, an old star of the show returning. It's not SJT. Who's that? I can't tell you. You'll, you'll find out next week. Shaq. <laughs> an old star of the show. Oh yeah, no, I He's do. Back. Know. I do know. Anyway, well, uh, we'll be back next week. Good luck on the punt. Absolutely treacherous uh, conditions. Make sure you um, check track conditions, weather. Jump in a little birdie shop. Head to Racing Watch. Uh, buy a shaver. Get some punting form, and just find a winner and be patient. I think Walt will give it away on his little uh, promo video for the upcoming battle. See you next week.